Morning traders. I'm going to start with the financials since they're the backbone of the market. Having a very late start, very high volumes on the S&Ps this morning. Uh, so that is a warning sign when you have a sell signal on very high volume, suggesting that the short squeeze uh, may be over with and that the selling pressure may commence from here on out. Uh, some takeaways of my financials. Two weeks ago, value for the financials was put in up here. Okay. Then last week, we bet out value down here. And so far this week, despite this massive short squeeze, the, volu the uh, volume point of control for the week has not migrated to the upside with price. So something to keep in mind coming into today's session, we are on the downside of the, uh, the Fibonacci or, or the, uh, the uh, exponential moving average. We've rejected the volume point uh, or the the expected market maker move high for the week. We are getting complete rejection this morning, and we do have a downgrade, a, a dual downgrades on J.P. Morgan this morning going forward here. And you know this is the problem child in my opinion on these financial markets. So you know all the way on the up on this rally this week we have financials have underperformed the move up. So just keep that in mind going forward here. We're probably not out of the woods. Uh, and it's basically based on thought volume profile view. We are on the overbought side of the uh, weekly profile. So basically, generally speaking, when you're at, at the, the leading edge, at the upper edge of a volume profile uh, for the week, you tend to migrate away from that. So something to keep in mind. And this area here was, you know, it, you know two weeks ago, it was completely rejected. This uh, this uh, it's this uh, this is a lower volume node acted two weeks ago, and uh, now we're trying to build out value at, at higher prices, uh, trying to decide what where we're going to go here. So just something to, to, to some takeaways here. Um, you can um, it does seem that you know um, well maybe we do just build out value up here, but this right here is what worries me. It's the fact that uh, the volume point of control for the week is. Um, overlapping last week's and that uh, this was just merely a short squeeze the past couple of days and you know it, we could actually start seeing responsive selling pressure in our financials so that is a major takeaway that I'm seeing this morning on these markets um, okay wouldn't you know it a second here there it is I'm sorry Okay, some takeaways this morning. These are our daily webs. Uh, that last chart was the weekly webs. <clears throat> so basically, uh, Wednesday's inventory built out in this area. So Wednesday we came in strong, you know, finished the day out strong on volume. Buyers were coming in supporting prices right here. So buyers were stepping up at this point Wednesday evening to support prices and inventory. Then we came in yesterday and... Uh, <clears throat> wait, 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 take I'll get my days mixed up here, aren't I? Or we're on Friday. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. That that's what built this out yesterday. And then yesterday we managed to build out value above Wednesday's value. And they managed to bring that up. And so far this morning, we are rejecting all of um 80% of the inventory that uh or the auction. 80% of the auction as of yesterday, right here, right now, looks to be getting rejected. So, and we are suggesting that the uptrend is in jeopardy, um, that we are crossing over our midline on the uptrend. So the, the, these are two bearish factors coming into today's session. Um, just some, th some takeaways that I'm seeing here. I'm not saying that we're going to get a major continuation sell-off. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, just some takeaways that I'm seeing here that the markets are trying to decide or not whether or not to maintain this uptrend and we are catching a lot of high volume at this price point so the dip uh, the, the dip buyers are coming in and the short sellers are coming in right here trying to decide uh direction so it's a crisp critical crossroads that we are at here on the open in today's session so keep that in mind going forward in your trading Well, shoot. 
sorry, got the wrong time frame there, uh, five minutes. <coughs> okay, situation. Uh, thing was with the cues. The, uh, what happened with the cues there, uh, the Wednesday inventory didn't migrate with price. Uh, we had the end of day rally, but it didn't migrate with price. So the profile is a little bit different on that one. So it's actually showing a little bit relative weakness on the Qs versus the S&Ps coming into today's session uh, verse on this week's build out. So just keep that in mind going forward here. We are above uh, the market maker move. We're still hovering right above where the market's expected to close the week. They explode. They expected to close before, below 75.15 for this week. And we are coming into the midline for the uh, our primary uptrend. So I'm actually thinking we are going to backtest this midline for sure today at some point. And that lends me to think that we're going to get a little bit more selling pressure on the open this morning based on my volume profile. I'm not, I've, I'm not sure if we can come back below our uh, market maker move for the week or not. I'm just that this just basically using volume profile theory that does make sense coming back into the midline and just like we did before here and uh you know for the uh gives a little bit more ammunition for the bears going into the open today in my opinion under that scenario uh right here right now this is actually uh much more troublesome uh this suggests to me that we are going to open the market here with the russell showing relative weakness right out of the gate so that that's my major red flag so far this morning that um you know, I have not really liked how this volume profile has been building out on the Russell. It has not been a constructive build, in my opinion, and it actually really looks like short covering rallies that have been supporting price on the Russell, in my opinion. And it's not actual uh, fundamental um, accumulation uh, on prices down here. I mean, that's this is my major, major trouble, uh, trouble child going forward in today's session. And we are right smack right above the expected move for the week for the Russell on the verge of potentially um, getting a sell off of the uh, primary uptrend right here, right now at, at uh, almost nine o'clock this morning. So something to keep in mind going forward in today's trading. OK, uh, let's see here. Uh, OK, my Nasdaq. Um, so well, this morning so far, we got uh, most actives are your AMD uh, selling off, of course, with the rest of the markets. Uh, the, the, the trend is up for the uh, uh, chips, chip makers. So, you know, I, I mean, you have to be really careful uh, typically to rule a thumb on the chip makers by the dip based on where the price action is right now. So uh, that's something to a takeaway to take. Um, Apple. You know, we're over the 238 area, so typically the rule of thumb, it's buy the dip scenario for Apple. That's the same it goes true for Microsoft as well. So something to, to some key takeaways to take right here. Uh, Tesla, uh, typically um, around 500, 490, 500 is a buy the dip area. I've been acting that way for a while now, and there isn't really any headlines to suggest that's not the case. Um, so, you know, uh, as far as the NASDAQ goes, it does look like, um, you know, uh, uh, a little bit more supportive than what you do, uh, some of the, uh, the Russell, of course. Okay, on my S&Ps this morning, Carnival getting rocked again, so the short squeeze seems to be over, and the honeymoon period for the stimulus might be over with here for... Uh, that one Boeing honeymoon honeymoon period seems to be fading. So we had a massive short squeeze in Boeing, and just remember what what happens with Tesla, how it just rocketed almost to a thousand dollar share on a short squeeze, and uh, that can tend to really jack up the prices and stuff. So you don't you got to be really mindful of what's going on here with Boeing. Our actual real buying is actual real buying going to come into Boeing shares here and support prices. Or is um, is this a dip buying opportunity, or uh, was that short is the short squeeze over with for Boeing? So this is probably one of the most important names to watch going into today's trading session because this is the one that's uh, you know has been damaged so bad uh, based this 
on this coronavirus news. So uh, keep that in mind going forward here on your trading. Okay. S&P's 6 million already. This is huge. And what I do like to see, look at that. We are actually getting a whole lot of participation out of the queues this morning. So uh, really important to note that going forward here, that the we must, we must be at a more equilibrium area in the market, considering we're getting volumes on both sides, uh, maybe a crossroads in this market. Uh, either trying to build value at this price or uh, the sellers are trying to start uh, uh, rotating prices to the downside. So a lot of buying and selling hitting the tape at this point. All those dip buyers at the lows, they're, they seem to be trying to ring the register up here, in my opinion. And, you know, that doesn't mean necessarily prices aren't going to go higher. It does mean there's a lot of profit taking in today's morning session already. <laughs> okay. Things going on in the news. Okay, I had the financials up here. Okay. Let me get my little list out right here. We have uh, GameStop came out. Their earnings. Let me pause it here while it's loading. Uh, here we go. Uh, they sold. They're selling off this morning. No, no. They're rallying. They're rallying off their earnings this morning. So I guess that's a little constructive on that. Lulu which I thought was really going to uh, disappoint, which it it's down just slightly this morning on Lulu. Must not near, be near as bad as I expected. I actually had taken the 185 puts, and I was up a little bit yesterday. And uh, generally, if I'm up on the trade uh, into the close, I'll just red take my profits and not worry about it. And that's exactly what I did. But Lulu is well inside of its expected move, and uh, so the, the numbers must have been less bad than what expected and restoration hardware i believe is also out no that's uh monday restoration hardware comes out so this is another one i'm keeping on my watch we did have a downgrade today on rh going into uh earnings uh this week uh, next week so that's another one that's uh hitting my tape this morning uh work of course this one here is another um zoom play catching a major um Upgrade this morning on Zoom or on work. So this is a coronavirus play and they had a $28 price target on that. So basically even with the upgrade, it's it seems to be uh, priced in. The move has been priced in for uh, Slack. Okay. Uh, Starbucks caught a downgrade, something you don't typically hear. So basically suggesting that uh, some analysts think that the uh, pop is nearing an end on the stocks and the valuations are getting fairly priced at these limp numbers. Um, $80 target, you know, so basically it wasn't necessarily a downgrade. They lower the price targets. So something to keep in mind uh, for Starbucks going into today's session. It's already, um, you know, it's still within this week's expected move. So uh, something to keep in watch. I don't keep uh, expected moves on all the stocks, just key ones. McDonald's is another one. They lowered the price target on it to $200 on McDonald's. You know, so it's selling off with the markets a little bit this morning. Uh, that puts it back up here for the price. You know, um, they're just uh, bringing their estimation, estimations back in a little bit on some of these stocks uh, this morning. Um, Chipotle Grill. Okay, really got rocked with this sell-off in the markets. They are do have a price target seven ninety for Chipotle Grill going ahead in today's markets. It's really I find it very difficult to buy into these restaurants, especially sit-down restaurants, uh, until we get a better handle of how soon the mar the uh, economy is going to open back up. Pepsi and Coke have been on fire for ratings. And uh, this week, we've had several days of upgrades for Pepsi and Coke. Both of them, uh, Pepsi 144. So basically, whoa, way up here. And some of these ratings are just off the chart on some of these stocks. And uh, so Pepsi is an, um, catching another nice upgrade this morning for Pepsi. Coke had a rating increase. I didn't see the actual price target increase on it. But that's another one to keep on your watch going forward. Um, uh, 
it's had some way up here near the highs too this week. So another thing to keep on your watch this morning. Okay, like I said, Boeing is probably the hottest stock out there. We need to keep a very close eye on this. We are testing the uh, exp exponential moving average as we speak, potentially uh, signaling uh, selling pressure coming in, profit taking coming off the table. Uh, so we saw uh, three weeks ago, the value was put in at uh, 163. So basically that does seem to be the, the, if I were betting anything, I would say the squeeze is coming off today and we are going to migrate back down to the 160 area in today's trading session if I were a betting person. But so far this week, prices have, um, you know, buyers and sellers have met at the 180 area. So, you know, it's, you know, you're, you're looking, it's either going to rally to 180 or it's going to migrate and uh, profit taking is going to come out of the system back down to 163, in my opinion. Some some key levels to be watching going forward. Colgate Palm Olive got an upgrade today. Uh, I did not see the price target on that one. Something to keep on watch, selling off of the rest of the markets. And like I said, JP Morgan dual downgrades today. So that's something uh, that's going to weigh, should weigh on the markets today. So uh, something to keep in mind going forward here. And then we have uh, Caterpillar. <coughs> Caterpillar caught a downgrade today. Uh, basically, uh, <coughs> so um, we have to keep this one on our watch going forward on Caterpillar. Um, so I'm not really, uh, it's testing at moving average as well. Uh, it has been a slower mover versus the markets. And then we had uh, Home Depot catching an upgrade. So uh, that's something to keep on watch here. And, uh, you know, we are in the void between value areas. So uh, if the markets and we are just barely holding above a critical uh, trend line here on Home Depot. So uh, that's another one. Uh, buyers might step up today uh, supporting price on Home Depot uh, if if buyers were to come in today i just don't see a buy signal so far this morning i could be dead wrong it just uh doesn't seem to be an atmosphere that i would want to be taking to the wrong side amazon we are crossing back away from the uptrend this morning on price um it, you know it could just go sideways today of course but we do have uh one of the warehouses they've decided to close till april 1st so that's, i know it's not too far away but uh, they're going to do a deep cleaning for the warehouse. Uh, I think it's one of the ones in Kentucky or something. And uh, so keep that in mind going forward in today's trading session. Uh, Amazon, Amazon's been holding out like a, a like a beast during this crisis, but something to keep on watch going forward. Here. So basically, uh, one second here, please. Okay, to make a synopsis, we are breaking the primary uptrend for the uh, market. I think we're going to have responsive selling into the open. As you can see, these are short. These were um, short squeeze rallies. Okay. And as of we speak, yesterday, all the yesterday's inventory, we are, re, we are rejecting 80% of yesterday's inventory as we speak going into the open this morning uh, on the ES futures. we on high volume. So uh, something to keep in mind. And we are above. Uh, what we what was expected to be the market maker move uh, for the week. So, you know, just keep that in mind going forward here. Typically, yeah, if you do the flip side in a bull market, you know, if you're in a bullish uptrend, you don't want to be pushing prices to the downside going into the end of the week if you're already outside of the expected move for the week, okay? Similar situation in a bull market. You don't want to be going long up here if expectations were down here for the best case scenario last week. Okay. You know, yeah. You know, so basically, you know, uh, if you're long up here, you're going to, the high odds, you're going to get squeezed to the downside to finish the week out with. Yeah. If, with, if, and when, if the bear market rules are applying, still applying to this market. Okay. Okay. That's all I got to say. Uh, I'm leaning to the bearish side, but, but you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, like the video if like it. Please retweet it on uh, Twitter 
Gumby 9662C. I will have it on Twitter as well. And, uh, you know, please leave some comments if you disagree or if you got some different ideas than I do and I'm missing something. Thanks a lot.